iOS 18 is out and it's got a ton of new features with some significant changes. Today I'm going to cover 10 new changes with iOS 18 so stay tuned. So as you can see on my iPad it's 6.2 GB, on the iPhone it's close to 7 GB but I can't show that to you because I'm already running 18.1 beta. So what's new with iOS 18? Control center also gets a huge update. So when you swipe down from the right, this is what you get. There's a lot going on here and let me try and explain everything to you. Let's start with the top. There's a plus icon over here when you tap on it you'll be able to customize the entire layout you'll be able to see these nubs over here and holding onto this nub you can literally resize each and every control and this gives you a lot of flexibility and i love it you can also add a control by clicking on add a control there's a large list to choose from and you can literally set whatever you want to your control center you also get a brand new power button over here and long pressing on it will let you shut down your iphone so that's a nice addition as well the next page is your now playing section so whenever you're playing any media, it will show up the controls over here. Next is of course your home kit section. So if you have a smart home setup, it will list all your devices over here. And the last of course is your connections tab. There are multiple ways of navigating the control center. You can swipe of course, like I showed you. You can even tap on the icons on the side if you want to jump from the first to last. And you can even hold and swipe. The next feature is something that I've really been waiting for a very long time. And now Apple has finally added it and I'm very happy about the fact. You can now lock individual apps with your face ID and that gives you added security for your iPhone. So just long press on an app and you'll see the new feature require face ID pop up over here. Tap on it and here you can see it says require face ID for WhatsApp. So if you click on require face ID and scan your face, now WhatsApp has been locked with face ID. So if I tap on it, this is what pops up. To remove it, long press again and click on don't require face ID and scan your face. You can even take this one whole step further. Long press on it, click on require face ID and then select the second option which says hide and require face id so click on that scan your face this is what comes up it says that you can hide whatsapp so then click on hide app so as you can see whatsapp is hidden and you can't even search for it it doesn't show up at all to access your hidden app scroll all the way to the right scroll down and you'll be able to see there's a hidden folder over here tap on that scan your face and now it will show up your hidden apps over here to disable it again long press click on don't require face id and once you scan your face or enter your passcode whatsapp's removed from hidden and you can now access it ios 18 brings some huge changes to the home screen you can now move icons to wherever you want you can also add custom app icon colors this is by far the biggest change apple has ever done to the home screen to do this simply drag the icon to wherever you want you can place it anywhere you want of course, you can't place it in the middle because it will still snap into the 4x4 grid like Apple has designed the home screen. But at least now you can place the icon wherever you want in the home screen without it snapping back to the last fill position. I know Android's had this feature for years or maybe even decades, but this is what iPhone just got now and I'm very happy about it. For changing the app icon colors, you have to long press on the screen and click on edit then go into customize. So let me go through this one by one. Light is of course the light icons which are there by default. Dark is the new edition where all your icons change into a dark mode and this looks really cool in my opinion. I find this is the best out of all but of course it depends on how you match it with your wallpaper. You can leave it to automatic so if it's day and night it will automatically change the icon colors and then comes tinted. Now tinted is where you can set a color to all your icons and you can match it with your wallpaper so this is also a pretty cool option. You can also set your icons to large but just keep in mind it will remove all labels. I prefer the small icon. If you are someone who is going to be using the large icons please let me know in the comments down below. Believe it or not but calculator also gets a huge update in iOS 18. Also for the first time ever calculator app is now available on the ipad by default i never thought this was going to happen but apple surprised all of us and they included the calculator app by default on the ipad now why did they do this let me show that to you firstly whenever you type anything there is now a dedicated delete button over here so you can no longer swipe left to delete a number but instead you have to use this next is if you tap on this button over here you will get three different options you get the basic calculator scientific and the all new math note before i show you math notes let me show you convert this is for a currency conversion you can convert from usd to inr or whatever currency you want so if i tap one usd it gives me the current conversion let's go into math notes so math note is the sole reason why calculator app is now available on the ipad let me show what this is so if i click on a new note and now i can type anything that i want over here like let's say two plus two it already gives me the answer over here if i continue divided by 
4 as you can see it gives you the option over here and you can even select to put in the whole equation or just the answer and I can continue with this equation and make it as long as I want and you continue giving me the answer over here. This is really fantastic and it's so cool for people who are in school or college. It's very helpful and it's a great time saver. So why did Apple add calculator to the iPad? It's because if you have an Apple Pencil, you can write the equation with your hand and it will give you the answer like you can see right over here. Also do note that the answer given is matching your handwriting. So how cool is that? And MathNote doesn't just do simple addition or subtractions. It does complicated equations as well. So give it a try. In iOS 18, passwords is now a standalone app. Earlier you had to go into settings, then password, and there you could access all your passwords. But now you can just access it with this app. So when you click on it and you enter your face ID, this is the interface that comes up over here. You get all your saved passwords right over over here including your Wi-Fi passwords and this is a real nice touch. I'm glad Apple made this a standalone app because this is a very important app to have. The next new feature is within your notes app. So if you want to record audio within notes, now it can be transcribed and this is huge. Let me show you what I mean. So if I click on the attach button and click on record audio, you'll be able to see that there's a new caption button over here. Tap on that and once you start your recording, whatever you say will get transcribed over here. And this is a huge time saver because you can literally select all this and paste it wherever you want. Now that's a really nifty feature. The phone app also gets some massive new features and there are huge updates as well. First out of the bat, T9 dialing finally comes to the iPhone. You have no idea how much I've missed this feature because I've been very used to T9 dialing right from Nokia days. If you know what Nokia is, do let me know in the comments down below. So what T9 dialing is, if I want to call HDFC, I just need to tap on the numbers that spell out HDFC. So as you can see over here, HDFC. So if I type in HDFC, these are all the results that come in over here. So if I click on 32 more, it gives me a list of all the HDFC numbers that I have. And if I click on see all, it will also give me a list of all of them. So this is something that has been been missing on the iPhone and I'm really really glad that Apple has finally added it. Good job Apple. Also please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps my channel grow and it keeps me motivated to make more videos like these just for you. Call recording is finally available on the iPhone. Yes, you heard me right. Call recording is now finally available on the iPhone. And this for me is the most exciting feature because I really missed call recording moving from Android to iPhone. So let me show how call recording works on an iPhone. It is slightly different from Android. If I dial a number, this is the brand new call recording button over here. When you click on it, it'll give a prompt to the receiver that the call is going to be recorded. Like you can see over here, within three seconds, it gives that prompt. And once it says that, the call recording will start. Not only that, you can even click on this and you can take notes on the call. Like whatever you're discussing on your call, you can put it on speaker or if you have uh, AirPods or something. You can take down notes by typing over here. Like if you're taking down minutes of the meeting or something, that's really handy. Furthermore, once you hang up the call, whatever recording has been done, it also gets completely transcribed. Now that is a really clutch feature. I don't think Androids have these. Maybe third-party apps do, but my Samsung phone could could not do this. You can see that the entire call has been transcribed over here, which is really cool. And I can just copy this and paste it wherever I want. All your call recordings will get saved in the notes application under a new category called call recordings. Since the number that I dialed wasn't saved in my contacts, so it just says call recording over here. But if you call someone whose number is saved, their name will pop up over here. Apple has implemented call recording very well and I'm very happy about that. But I just wish that they had set call recording on by default for each and every call. I need to manually click on the record button, which is a slight hassle, but it's a minor inconvenience. Really. If you can't see call recording options, on your phone, you might have to change your iPhone's region. To do that, go into settings, general, scroll down, language and region, and make sure that you've set your region to United States. Also, when you change the region, it'll ask you whether you want English US or English India or wherever the region you are in. Make sure you select English US. So once you change your region, you don't have to worry. It's not going to affect your day-to-day -day operations in any way. One of the biggest and most substantial changes in iOS 18 is to the Photos app. The entire app has been redesigned designed completely and this will take you some time to get used to. I've had iOS 18 beta on my iPhone for several months now and I'm still getting used to the new, new photos app but trust me guys it is a welcome change and it's a better change in my opinion. So when you open up the new photos app this is what you will see. You'll see that the bottom has been completely redesigned over here. It says
says years, months, all. And it also gives you some new options. There's a new filter option where you can filter all your favorites, edited photos, videos, just your screenshots. And you can even go into view options where you can zoom in, zoom out. You can even view just your screenshots if you want or the photos that have been shared with you. So this definitely makes your photos app way more flexible and much more powerful and I like it. Also, when you open up an image, it does not go to the full screen it's within a frame and if you tap on it again it will go to full screen like how it did before also when you click on videos it will play the video within a small frame and when you tap on it it will expand as well also when you play videos it will loop back so if you are playing a video over here and now that you can see it's about to end it will loop back to the beginning and this is also a new addition to the photos app there you can see it's playing the video again when you scroll down you'll see these are the new sections over here this is your recent days section where you can see all the photos that you've clicked recently you also have all your albums that you've preset in the past people and pets will pop up over here and even your pin collection will show up over here all your favorite photos and everything they will also create a lot of memories trips has also been added over here and it's really cool because it groups all your photos together with the same geotag location it's a much neater way to view your memories and i think that's what apple was focusing on they wanted the photos application to list all your memories in a much better way and i think that they have accomplished that with the new photos app and if you scroll down you also get featured photos and at the bottom you can view your media types like just your videos selfies photos portraits and clicking on them you'll be able to do that you can also view all your hidden photos over here by unlocking it with your face id and whatever you have deleted will also be locked and you can only view them once you unlock it with your face ID. If you do share albums, they will all pop up over here and you also get a wallpaper suggestion at the bottom. You can also customize and reorder your entire photos app. If you don't like something, you can remove it from here. And this is a really nice customization feature that Apple has added to the photos app. So these are all the noteworthy new changes and features to iOS 18. I hope you found this video informative. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps my channel grow. See you in the next one.